contribution to this is on a page which has been left on various tables. And I'm not actually going to read from it, but I'm going to highlight what I think is its relevance to the um, knowledge exchange dimension of the Brazil-Canada project. Um, I'm very interested in Ciencias Sem Fronteras. And I think Ciencias Sem Fronteras is a gift from, not exactly God, but maybe from Dilma <laughs> to uh, our project. Because <coughs> in the next few years, there will be hundreds and hundreds of Brazilian technologists, scientists, scholars, etc., who are fanning out all over the world, including to Canada, in order to um, come back as transformed informants of the field that they are uh, specialist, specializing in. And so this gives us an opportunity to um, follow them through their path. Their path begins in their context in Brazil, untransformed, you can imagine, but selected. Their intermediate path here in Canada or abroad in a university or a, uh, a setting in which they are to um, acquire knowledge. And then their third step would be uh, back in Brazil with a mandate, I imagine, to communicate to their colleagues and to start publishing and so forth in the light of their experience abroad. Um, this is actually a very <coughs> exciting time um, for Brazil because it shows that um, since uh, foreign experience is required of these thousands of people, um, second languages, foreign languages, international languages are going to play a role. And language policy and language planning need to be part of the success uh, paradigm for Ciencias Sem Fronteras. Um, what this uh, document proposes is that um, somehow we identify these people, especially the ones who are coming to Canada, and cooperate between universities in Brazil and Canada to receive them, to identify them, receive them, interview them, and identify what makes their experience in Canada um, successful and to what degree successful and how defined. Um, this is something that the, both Brian and I have some, I think, 20-year-old expertise and experience in because both of us were involved to different degrees in this historic move of the Chinese uh, government in the 1980s in cooperation with the Canadian government to receive uh, thousands and thousands of Chinese scholars who were um, prepared in China for a uh, stage in Canada, who were followed up in Canada. In fact, I led a group of people who um, uh, interviewed them and their Canadian uh, supervisors and so forth. And then there were a group of Chinese scholars back in China who had interviewed them when they came back. And so this whole decade of knowledge exchange between China and the West is, in my mind, a model to um, base a project similar to that uh, with respect to Ciencias Sem Fronteras. Um, just to give you an anecdote, and this comes up from a uh, discussion that we had yesterday, how do you establish levels of success? And what are levels of success? Uh, certainly in um, the experience of interviewing and evaluating the Chinese in the 1980s, I can tell you that the linguistic levels were not sufficient to identify levels of success. It really was a question of um, the degree to which their fields were understood as similar or different in the two countries. And so on our questionnaire, the most interesting question was, how, do you, how would you rate on a scale of one to 10, 10 being extremely different and one being exactly the same, how your field is conceptualized in your home university in Nanjing or Qinghai? and in Ottawa or Toronto or Winnipeg or Vancouver. And we got more or less a breakdown between uh, very universalist fields or fields as experienced as universal, such as mathematics on the one hand, and fields experienced as very different. In fact, we had one or two students saying, or, or exchange people saying that 10 didn't describe <laughs> the difference between women's studies as conceived <laughs> in China and women's studies conceived here in Toronto. 
Also, I can use those two fields as another uh, key anecdote that perhaps the most successful person in the group that uh, it was about 281, I think, that I interviewed with um, Lin, Sun Yi Lin, um, probably the most successful person that had the lowest English score. But the field that he was in was stochastic processes in mathematics. And although uh, Hao Wenyang <coughs> could not have ordered a beer in a restaurant in Canada, once he got in front of a blackboard and drew a stochastic process equation, it was pure art. And he was the only one of the 281 offered a uh, full-time um, faculty job at uh, a, a Canadian university. And he had the lowest score in, in English from, uh, from China. On the other hand, the person who had the highest score happened to be in women's studies. And she was one of the few who actually left early, went back to China, said there's nothing here for me. Um, we, they, we just don't understand each other. And so it wasn't a matter so much of um, identifying <coughs> cultural differences. It was a matter of identifying differences inside the culture of fields, inside, inside the epistemological uh, framework that uh, people were, were operating in. Now, I noticed that the priority fields of the Ciencias Sem Fronteras, generally speaking, are, um, are in the uh, hard sciences and engineering and so forth, minerals. Um, however, I think that there is a potential here for um, cooperative research between Brazilian and Canadian uh, scholars interested in uh, epistemological diversity, interested in uh, language um, language evaluation, language uh, training, and in um, building a kind of uh, almost, auto, uh, almost biographical capillary level uh, set of knowledges about <coughs> embodied experiences of knowledge exchange in fields across cultures. And I, I, I just call upon those of us who are in, in, uh, in the project to consider the, ciencias, the interaction between Ciencias Sem Fronteras and, um, and the kind of things that we're talking about here. Um, for example, uh, Valkyria in her uh, notion of um, the kind of uh, globalized person who is called upon or needed in today's world. Uh, certainly, these people who return to Brazil after their experience abroad are not simply going to repeat knowledge and they're not simply going to reconstruct knowledge but they're likely going to live up to this ideal of being able to transit, connect, construct, reconstruct and I think since we see or at least I see and I think Diana does sees the Brazil Canada project as kind of a meta project looking upon the Electromentos Nuevos and uh, Brazil Canada language, uh, Brazil Canada exchanges in general. I think our role as um, providing a, a, a meta, meta analytic framework for uh, Ciencias Sans Fronteras would be um, useful for us, it would be extremely useful for Ciencias Sans Fronteras, and it would be extremely useful for Canada Brazil relations. Okay, having said that, uh, I now invite you to join 